sometimes we fail to see God's hand in challenging moments. He's a God who takes these challenges that happen in our lives and He uses them to mold us and to, to bring us into what He wants us to be. Living for Jesus, He is worth living for. I have been crucified with Christ. Therefore, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Welcome to living for Jesus, living for Jesus, life that is true, striving to please him in all that I do. In this episode, I'll be talking to you about a man who had it all. In the book, 2 Kings and chapter 5, I'll be reading verse 1. The Bible says, Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor. Let me first stop here. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the word. A lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Inspire us with the Holy Spirit we may understand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We have a man before us. The Bible says his name, Captain Naaman. He was not just an ordinary man. He was extraordinary citizen with so many accomplishments in his life. And looking at living for Jesus, there are so many things we can learn from this great man, Naaman. First of all, the Bible says that he was a commander of the army of the king of Syria. He was a mighty captain, trusted by the king of Syria. He was a man who every time went to war, he came back with success. He was an intelligent captain who knew the tricks and, and, and the ways in the battleground. He was a man who was trusted by his nation. He was a great man. Then the Bible says that he was also great and honorable in the eyes of his master. The king trusted him. He was the second in command. A man whom the king would turn to and say, Now, Naaman, what, what should we do? A man who gave advice and, and counsel to the king, trusted men of the king, Naaman. The Bible says more about him, that by him the Lord had given great victory to Syria. Now this is amazing that though Naaman was not a believer in the true God, yet God looked down at this man and saw someone who was trying his best to live to the light that he had received. And he said, that is a good man. And I will be with him and I'll give him victory. Though he was not a worshiper of a true God, but God saw his heart and he realized that he was, he was good. And it's amazing how sometimes we might look at people and think, oh, uh, they are not God's children. Even though they are not in the fold or are not believers. But God has his children even in places 
that we may not expect. expect. The Bible also says that he was a mighty man of valor. He was a courageous man, a brave man. And one says that it takes so much courage to live for Jesus. It takes courage to serve the Lord. It takes courage to stand and say, I surrender all to Jesus with all my heart. It takes courage to say, I give all to Jesus. It takes courage, the courage that Daniel had as he, he, he faced those challenges in a foreign land. The courage that Joseph had standing for what he believed. The courage that many Bible characters had who lived a faithful life. And we need this courage. But after saying all these good things about a man, then the Bible adds a three-letter word that changes everything. And this is how, uh, why I love the Bible. If it was a man introducing Naaman, he would say only good things about him. He would bring out only the positive things, but not so with the Bible, because the Bible is the word of God. The Bible, after saying all these things about a man strong, courageous, admired, uh, successful man, great, regarded, victorious, powerful, wealthy man, prestigious man, a hero, then the Bible says, but he was a leper. Just one thing changed everything. Yemen could look at all the list of his accomplishments. He could look at the, the list of his achievements. But every time he saw himself in a mirror, he was defined by the fact that he was a leper and nothing could change the fact. And every time he was reminded that under his skin there was an incurable disease. I want to let you know there are some times we think that man is in control, but God is in control. Sometimes when money becomes uh, uh, the first thing and power and, and prestige, and, and sometimes we are tempted to bow and worship people. But God is the source of everything, and you've got to recognize your dependence upon him. For time comes, then you realize that without God, without Jesus, you are completely nothing. But Naaman was a leper. He was desperate. No disease could cure this. No, no medicine could cure this disease. In spite of all things that he has achieved, they are all nothing. There are many men and women today whose lives has been ruined by this word, but he is good, but he is a good speaker, but he is a caring father, but, but may the Lord have mercy upon us. A man can be great and highly admired, successful like Yemen, and taken as the example in all the community, but when that man is completely lost, you can even be looked as a spiritual leader. You can even be uh, praised by everybody, but if you are holding on to certain sin in your life, you are headed to destruction unless you repent and be covered by the righteous blood of Jesus Christ. No man is safe without the blood of Jesus Christ. But Naaman was a leper and nothing could help. One thing changes everything that Naaman, this great man, has achieved. I remember one time walking in the southern part of the Philippines. I went to his school and met a little girl uh, in elementary there. I was just visiting their class and she looked at me with the friends and they were kind of describing my face. And I could hear them whisper to each other. And then he said, Kuya Dan is a handsome guy. 
and he has a good nose, he has this and that. Then she added something, but he is black. So I don't like him. One thing, you got all those things complete in your lives, but one thing can lead you to destruction. Unless we wholly surrender our lives to Jesus and let him completely take control and live for Jesus, we are headed to destruction. And now the Bible says, after talking about these great men, then the Bible says in verse 2, And the Assyrians had gone out on raids and had brought back a captive, a young girl, from the land of Israel. Amazing. The word of God. Talks about a great man. Highly esteemed. With so much success. And he's hopeless. And then talks about now. A little girl. Even her name is not mentioned. But there was one thing about this girl. She knew the God of heaven. What? Will it benefit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? Jesus put on one side, he put the whole world and everything in it. And then on the other side, he put your soul. And then he compares your life with the entire world, having everything. But you lose your life, you lose your soul, you have lost it all. This young girl... The Bible doesn't tell us about her so much. It just says he were, she was a little girl. And then the Bible says she was a slave. We don't need to know her name. But all we need to know is that this little girl had a message from the Lord. And I praise God that when you have Jesus, you have everything. When you know the God of heaven and you learn to trust in him, you have the solution to every challenge in this world. Solution that even well-educated men cannot have come from a little girl who just trusts in the Lord. Help us, Jesus, to learn that living for Jesus is the best thing that can ever happen to us. The girl says, if this man would only go to my land, for there is a man of God, there is a prophet. He will be healed of his sickness. If I was this little girl, maybe I would say, let him die. But this little girl was a child of God. And, and how sometimes we want to show what we, we, we have done and what we have accomplished. And we want our name to be raised up. But whatever we do, it is the name of Jesus that is to be lifted up. No wonder the name of the little girl is not even mentioned to us. What is important is she had a message from the Lord. Jesus and Jesus alone to be seen in everything that we do. And she comes in to help. Despite of the fact that this man was an enemy of her people. But she helps. Sometimes we want to help uh, when we know what are we going to get at the end. Uh, sometimes we want to help when we know that this guy will be useful to me. Sometimes we want to smile to people, knowing that they will give us something. But this little girl was helping because she was a child of God. And the world needs people who will help because Jesus lives in them. And when Captain Yemen heard from the wife that there could be a solution to his sickness, Leprosy was a dreadful disease at that time. When it caught a person, he was hopeless, taken out of society. And he would even put on dirty clothes and walk out crying, unclean, unclean. Put out of the church, put out of society. This was the sickness of this great man. But I praise God that he has a way of humbling us. And I see God's amazing way of, of working and revealing that He is God. No matter what we have, no matter what we have achieved, He is.
this God and how sometimes we are taken with pride. I have done this. I have done that. But all these are blessings from the Lord. So when Naaman begins a wonderful journey and he takes advice from a little girl. You know, if you have even not had any education, but if you have Jesus, you can offer solution to even those who are highly educated. One man was dying and he was a great scholar, a philosopher, and he looked at his library and he realized he had read so many books. And as he was dying, none of these books gave him hope. He was still hopeless despite of all the books he had read. But on his deathbed, he got hold of the word of God and he reads there a line that there is no condemnation to them that are in the Lord. And he died with hope, saying, I give my life to Jesus. One line from the word of God gave him hope. Oh, one word from God's word is better than thousands and thousands of philosophical books all around the world. Learn to cherish the word of God. And so Naaman takes the advice of the little girl. You know, when you're dying, you will take any kind of advice. When they say, do this, you do it. You want to leave. My daddy was uh, uh, healthy when he was poor. But when he became rich and he began eating this and that and that, he developed many diseases. And in my place, we call them diseases of the rich. Uh, he got, you know, frequently having heart attack and, and, and unhealthy conditions attacked him from, because of unhealthy and healthy eating. But then one day they told uh, daddy that he could have cure from his diseases. He felt like he was about to die. And uh, that night I remember he called mama and, and he told mama please uh, I feel I can't make it throughout the night. And um, he slept that night and when he woke up in the morning he was still alive praise the Lord. He was directed to a place where he would be treated with food. So they gave him a very difficult treatment. They asked him to make juice from, uh, I think, around, around uh, different kind of fruits. It was very complicated. But my daddy did have base, and for the first time, he comes home with so many fruits. And we say, wow, daddy, thank you for the fruits. He says, this is not for you. This is my medicine. And he used to wake up at 2 o'clock and prepare all those glasses of juice. And he drank them every, it was very hard. But he did it, he wanted to leave. And Naaman begins a journey going to Israel to find cure for his disease. And when he arrived in the land of God, he went to a wrong person. He went to the king. The daughter didn't tell him to go to the king. He told him to go to a prophet. Uh, but you know, somehow when we, uh, we are rich and we think we can only work with rich people. But he was disappointed. He went to a wrong person. And you've got to know the source of all, uh, the solution to all your problems. It is Jesus. And you don't have to go to a wrong person. He came to a backslider. The Bible says when the king had uh, the news and receiving the Yemen, he tore his clothes upon receiving the letter. He was a backslider. He was a man who would have been the source of hope, but he didn't know the God of heaven. Yemen also brought uh, some money with him, carried gold and, and silver. Uh, sometimes we think that many, money can be a solution to every problem, but then he would learn that coming to God, you come by faith. And Jesus, the Lord is teaching him a great lesson. Before he heals him, he wants to heal him from pride. And Naaman not only bring money, but he came with the wrong plan. I am rich. And when he arrived, he knew that uh, the prophet would come out of his house. And he would do some things there. As a great man and honor him and touch him and say great words. When you come to the Lord, you've got to come in humility 
and let God heal you in his way. And when the Yemen looked at the way that was going to Elisha's house, he wondered, what kind of road is this? I can't walk on this road. But not only that, the prophet did not even come out. He sent a messenger, go tell the Yemen to go down at River Jordan and bathe seven times in that river. The Lord loved Naaman, and he was teaching him, he was trying to help him to, to, to put out pride out of him. And Naaman said, I can do that. We have powerful and wonderful rivers in my place. I can do to that, go to that muddy river. But God has ways and his servants talk to Naaman and say, oh, master, if the Lord had, if the, the prophet had asked you to do something great, you would do it. But he asked you to do something simple. Go down and bathe in River Jordan. The all. River Jordan was a, is a muddy place and, and dirty river. But that's where God sends Naaman. God was not through with this man. And he was working with him. And Naaman said, no, I go. But later on, he listens to his servants. And this rich man, very strong captain, feared and respected. He goes down, removes his shoes, then gets down that muddy river. He is now allow, accepting to do what the Lord says. And he dips himself down in that river, the Bible says, and comes out, nothing changes. And he goes down again and comes up. Nothing changes. And he says, I'm leaving. I'm going back home. So wait a minute. The prophet said seven times. Oh, sometimes we want to, to serve God in our own way. But we've got to be careful to do, thus says the Lord. Seven times the prophet said, this great man, I wonder what, how people felt as they saw their great captain go down and come up, go down and come up. And when he came up the seventh time, he looked at himself and the flesh had become like that of a young child. And he celebrated, I am healed, I am healed. Then he goes back to the prophet to say thank you. The Yemen was humbled by the Lord, not by riches, not by man and everything that he had, but he realized that God is powerful. And how sometimes we can easily forget and depend on the things that we have. But we've got to learn and even recognize it in our lives that we depend on God and God alone. And pride was put out of Naaman, and he realized that only God is the source of life, and we depend upon him. Pride is a great disease that can destroy the church, that can destroy a family, that can destroy a community, unless we ask God to heal us from the sickness of pride and, and cleanse us and cover us in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, we have no way out. And humbling ourselves at the feet of Jesus, then we realize that God's way sometimes might seem to be a hard way, but after all, it is the best way. Look back to these men and think of one of the close disciples of Jesus, Judas, a man that God loved so much. And Jesus opened all opportunities for him to repent of his selfish ways, to come out of his pride and humble himself before the Lord. But Judas hold on to his life. He hold on to his ambitions. Even on that last night before Jesus goes to die for us on the cross, he stooped down and washed the feet of Judas because he cared so much about him. But Judas did not listen. And he hold on and he went with his selfish plans, betrayed our blessed Lord, and he lost it all. But this man who didn't know God, when he learned a lesson from the Lord, 
he humbled himself and decided to live his life for the Lord, making a commitment to the Lord. And the Yemen, he got a strong relationship with God. But Judas, he lost it all after all that time of walking with God. You might be in the church, might have been there for a long time, but when you have never truly given your life to Jesus, when you have never truly surrendered everything to Jesus, then he wants to heal you. He wants to cover you in his righteousness. He wants to live in your life that he can accomplish great things in you. But you've got to say, Lord, here I am, I surrender. I want to live for Jesus. And I want my life to be covered with the precious life of Jesus. That not I, but Jesus live in me. That everything I do will be to pre please the Lord. When he comes in, he takes away the pride. He takes away the selfishness. He takes away anything that may separate us from giving service to Jesus Christ. Would you like to say, Lord, I surrender all to you. I give my life to you. Come and live in me. Bow your heads with me now as we pray. Father, Thank you for teaching us that having everything does not mean that we can depend on these things, but we need you for having Jesus is having everything. So help us to live for Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. May God bless you.